When I was only wearing my natural hair, it was hard for me to see it because I was like, I really don't care what people think. I started to be more aware of perception. But was it growing? Was it thriving? No. Hey internet friends, it's Victoria and I'm back with another video. I'm genuinely looking forward to talking to you guys about this. I'm just really amped up. I want to talk about where I currently am in my journey. I refer to this as my hair phase because I'm not sure if it's permanent and I'm not sure if it's just temporary. I'm pretty sure it's permanent but for some reason I like calling it a phase. So. You'll hear me say that in the video. I'm going to touch on why I became a blow dry natural knotless braids and what led me to wear those and the perception of our hair in general. The hierarchy of beauty, beauty standards basically. So this is going to be quite the video. Before we get into the actual video though, I am going to give a sort of synopsis of the start of my journey until now. Grab a snack, grab a drink, and just get comfortable because I'm really going to get into it in this video and yeah. Before we jump right in, I wanted to give you guys the backstory of my hair journey thus far. I've always been natural. My mom has never permed my hair and I've never had a relaxer, but I did have heat damage from continually silk pressing and trying to have variety with my hair. I've done braids, I've done faux locks, I've done crochets, I've done wigs, and I've tried my first wig last year. So that's where I'm at and I just wanted to let you guys know and just share my journey on where I am right now. Quick disclaimer and then I promise I'll get right into the video. Everything I'm saying is my own opinion and thoughts as I navigate my hair journey and I will also be clarifying or correcting certain statements when needed. Of course, I have to have me my coconut water. <laughs> okay, so first of all, the phase that I'm in right now is my blow dry natural phase, I guess. If you look back to my previous videos, you can see that I did heatless stretching. It was great, it worked. Just remember the period of waiting for my hair to dry was kind of like weird what i'm saying is that with heatless stretching and waiting for my hair to air dry it took a while and i had to kind of compensate by wearing hats and scarves which i didn't that like. period kind of led me to stop wearing scarves i just didn't like it anymore where i felt like if i was going to wear it it would have to look appropriate with the outfit i just didn't like where there's no correlation with the outfit you're wearing i feel like when it has to look cohesive like a boho kind of look like with maybe like a long skirt or like when you're just wearing a scarf and you have like everyday clothes it doesn't give for me so i stopped doing that probably when i stopped doing that like all together i probably also slowly transitioned into being a low dry natural basically that's where i'm at now and I just kind of wanted to talk about it. I want to list just quickly some reasons why I slowly became a blow dry natural. There is ease of styling after washing, in my opinion. Any hairstyle you do on blow dried hair is going to come out with more controlled, optimal results. If you do a bantu knot on blow dried hair, it's going to come out great. If you do a twist out, great. Great out great um whatever roller set it's gonna come out great like it's going to come out more to your liking versus when you start on your hair the way it is maybe wet or dry it already has a texture i think that's what it is it already has a texture and you're probably trying to get it to fit the texture of whichever style you're doing so if you're braiding it the braid makes a texture on its own so if you have your texture and the texture of a braid, twist, bantu, whatever, it's kind of like not gonna mix probably. Starting on like a blank canvas with stretched hair is more helpful. On certain occasions where I wash my hair and I blow dry, I can get to see the split ends and just like cut it right then and there. If I look back to my old video, my ends 
needed a trim. It's easier to just go ahead and trim after you've um, blow dried your hair. So I don't, I don't think I really need to explain that more. <laughs> okay, another reason that I am a blow dried natural is I think this is a, a huge reason for other people as well is that is for length length we worked to gain this length and health and i think we want to show it off as well it's our glory it's our crown and it's something that we've worked hard towards so it's almost like you want to see and display it basically we worked all this time retaining length why wouldn't we want to show it off is what i'm trying to say we need to realize that length is not just about appearances length is like one of the metrics of our beauty okay so what i mean to say here is that i believe there is a learning curve when it comes to understanding our hair compared to other hair textures and secondly we have to take shrinkage into consideration as another challenge shrinkage does give the appearance of short hair therefore maybe associating us farther from femininity as it can be attached to length in my opinion is what it is of course there are beautiful women who have short hair i've rocked short looks but we have to take into consideration that that is not a majority of women i think that the conclusion i'm getting at is shrinkage actually isn't an issue it's the standard of which it doesn't fit in so if length is attributed to beauty and womanhood then it doesn't really fit in there which is where the dilemma is i would say it does take a type of confidence but to completely ignore that it is a part of a metric of our beauty is like which brings me to my next point braids as you can see how long it is and i used to do mini braids on my hair kind of transitioned to adding hair now i didn't completely transition straight into doing this it was a huge phase this was another phase the i'm only gonna wear my hair phase comment down below if you've had that phase too like, i'm just wearing my hair and i saw how challenging that was um, i tried to do different cells like i basically just wanted to wear my hair normally just like any other woman would wear her hair in different styles i should have all these options that look beautiful and i should be able to show the variety and the beauty within my natural hair i did but was it growing was it thriving no that kind of transitioned me into i don't know I think I just wanted braids. I no, I was just inspired by Kiana Naomi. I absolutely love Kiana Naomi. Like, if you don't know her, what are you doing? Go follow her right now. She is just gorgeous in every way, and I love the content she makes. I was inspired by her knotless braids, and so I did box braids on myself. I didn't even know how to do knotless. And later on in that summer, I did my first set of knotless braids. Make this brings me to my next point of the hierarchy of beauty standards, if that makes sense. These feel natural, but they also satisfy the quota of the beauty standard for length. So without me having to wear a wig or weave, I've worn a weave twice, once or twice. They're fine, I would just need to figure out how to properly like get to my scalp. And then wigs I really feel are optimal because you can take it off and properly moisturize your hair and it's flexible. But as a dancer, I just don't feel comfortable having a wig and I don't feel comfortable and secure with the wig on. People have told me that there are ways that you can secure the wig in the back with like an elastic, you can glue it down. But I just don't want to risk it. I really don't. And I, it feels weird like covering my entire head with that. And that's me still recovering from like the second natural hair phase that I was talking to you about of like, I'm just going to wear my own hair. I'm still in that phase, even though I'm in the blow dry natural phase. It's still in the in between. I still feel like 
I need, like to me, this is still some degree of me, I wouldn't say wearing my hair, but my hair is out technically. Like it's in the braids, but it's, it's out. It's not like on my head and I'm not putting something on my head. It does feel weird to me and I want to see if it's something like I can get over because I think that wigs do look really beautiful but I also feel like um, I feel a little fake. I don't know why like maybe with this I should feel kind of like fake which I do feel a little bit but it doesn't it doesn't come close to how I feel when I've had like crochets and, and leaves and whatever. I don't know why I feel that way. And there's a part of me that knows like, I feel like once I put it on, I'll like it. Like I'll like the way I look with it. But like sometimes there's something deep down inside of you that feels a little bit like this isn't you. Like at the end of the day, <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. I do, I wanna, I kinda wanna get over it. So yeah, maybe one day, but I am comfortable adding some hair to my hair right now. And maybe, you know, maybe three years later, I'm rocking wigs. I don't know. This leads me to my next point is the reason I say maybe I'll wear wigs one day is because I do see wigs, like straight wigs as like, I'm basically saying, from what I've observed, I believe straight hair epitomizes the highest level of beauty in hairstyles. When I was only wearing my natural hair, it was hard for me to see it because I was like, I really don't care what people think. But I think as I started to be more aware of perception and like... Throughout my hair journey, my goal has really been to get to know my hair and going deeper than that, really get to know me. And I just, it sort of always has been about finding myself, but also growing into myself as a woman. And I've noticed that societal beauty standards are kind of subconscious to these decisions that I make about my hair choices. I started to see that it seemed to me like the wigs were, the straight wigs were like the, the highest like when people say they're going from zero to a hundred and they have like their hair on their head and then by the time they get to a hundred or the finished look they have a straight weave or a wig or whatever or wavy or curly i don't know that that does feel a little weird when you see certain women in higher spaces the higher you go up in corporate and celebrities really do rock that long straight look all the time so i don't know i feel like for the everyday woman things are a little different and then we can even go into like the perception of when you're natural like just wearing your hair out is like oh you know maybe she's down to earth and she's not too high maintenance Versus someone who has the wig, maybe it seemed like she's like top tier and she has things together. And I'm not sure how the perception got there. I'm sure we could probably dig deeper. That's what I've observed. Observed. And so I feel like these are kind of in the middle. The braids have the length and they have a straighter look, but it is not quite a straight weave and it's not quite natural. In a way, I do feel like I'm in the middle. It makes me feel like, I do feel like I leveled up, but then it also makes me feel like I didn't go all the way, like with a weave or wig. Another reason why I think I feel that braids are sort of in the middle, because um, if you take into consideration childish styles, things that we see as childish, we kind of associate to natural and we feel like certain looks are childish and when they grow up they can wear a weave it kind of gives this illusion as to like the weave is the goal or it's the it's womanhood which i spoke about is also attached to length and so it feels like a graduation into womanhood is that you can now have your extensions and so when it comes to braids i do see a lot of 
teens and um yeah well, um young women in their teenage years with the braids and so it can kind of make you think like it's not completely there yet but it's still a really beautiful look plenty of women who rock it all the time and so it makes me more confident in it when it comes to a weave it's like we would not put that in a child's hair we have to ask why why people say that we're sexualizing them when they do wear a weave saying that that hair is more woman-like and feminine those are my thoughts on my journey right now it's definitely way different from when i started it may be di really different from where i end up but that's the beauty of this journey and you're constantly changing as a human being and so yeah let me know what you guys think let me know your thoughts are you in a different hair stage are you in the same hair phase have you had the same kind of thoughts about like the hierarchy of hair and the influence of high achieving woman with a certain type of look i feel like we're all in different phases in life and i just wanted to share where i was when it comes to my hair and the perception of my hair in and the perception of hair within society and how it affects me basically so yeah y'all know the vibes make sure to like comment and subscribe and i'll see y'all in the next one peace